What's up guys? Today I want to talk about how I use wait for delay and wait for time in SQL Server. A lot of times you might be writing queries in SQL Server where you're trying to make those queries run as fast as you possibly can, right? You're trying to squeeze out every last drop of performance. Now while most of the times, right, that's what you want, there are certain scenarios where you might not want your queries to run as fast. In those instances, that's where I use the wait for command. Wait for will prevent the rest of your statement from executing, so it works really well in scenarios where you want to slow things down. One instance of where I use the wait for command is when I want to simulate human interaction with my app. While there's plenty of tools out there available for you to use to simulate uh, interactions with a SQL server, to stress test apps and things like that, sometimes that's just too heavy, right? It's too involved to use those other tools to just simulate some basic user interaction. In those cases, what I might do is write something like a while loop and use wait for delay in between my commands in order to simulate kind of a slower paced query execution that I would expect from either users hitting my app or from you know analysts writing ad hoc queries against my databases. If I want to get even a little bit more fancy, I might add some randomization uh, to my queries to generate some random numbers to help make my query input feel more human-like, right? To input random variables and to wait and delay for random amounts of time. Once again, this is kind of a quick and dirty hack uh, versus compared to other software that's available for you know, truly stress testing environments and for truly you know, simulating human interaction with your database. But if all you need is a quick and dirty solution, wait for delay is perfect for that use case. Another way that I like using the wait for command in SQL Server is for a poor man service broker. While service broker is really great for messaging and queuing, where maybe one process notifies another process when it's finished, uh, it takes a little bit of setup time to get it set up, right? It's, it's a little bit more involved to get it working, and it, and it isn't right in those quick and dirty scenarios where you just want some type of notification that one process is finished running. In those scenarios, I use the wait for command in a while loop again to constantly query or ping a, another table to check to see if certain data has completed. Right? I may have a process that updates a table with certain rows of data, and then in my while loop, I'll constantly just query that table to see if whatever data I'm looking for has finished. So in this example that I'm showing to you now on the screen, I want to check to see if anyone's purchased a dozen donuts so that I can send them a coupon code. And the way I do that is I have my while loop, and I have my statement there that is checking to see if a dozen donuts have been purchased yet, and if they have, it sets a success variable that allows me to exit my while loop and then run whatever procedure I want after that. Taking this idea one step further, instead of just using the wait for command with the delay option, right, which kind of pauses statement execution for a certain time period, I can use the wait for time command. And what the wait for time command does is it waits for the rest of your statement to execute until a designated time. So once again, in this donut shop example that I'm showing here, if our donut shop doesn't open until 6 a.m., maybe I don't wanna load my server with these extra while loop executions until at least after 6 a.m., right? There's no point in having this run at 5 a.m. because no one's in our app, no one's buying donuts, and so there's no way our condition will ever get met. So using wait for time in that instance will prevent our loop from running and checking our data until, you know, a time where realistically we might actually see that data. So those are basically the two major ways that I use the wait for command in SQL Server. If you use the wait for command in some other kind of way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks.